It began on a rain-soaked Tuesday evening. I was walking home from the library, my shoes sinking into the muddied puddles that the streetlights did little to illuminate. The air was thick with the smell of wet asphalt and decay, a scent all too common in the older part of the city where I lived. The usual clatter of the city seemed muted, and the only sound that accompanied me was the incessant tap of my shoes and the irregular beating of my heart. At first, I mistook the shadow for my own. It stretched grotesquely behind me, following every step with exaggerated mimicry. When I stopped, it halted, when I moved, it glided. But something was unsettling about the way it didn't quite align with the light, how it seemed to ripple with a life of its own. Probably just the streetlight flickering, I muttered to myself, trying to dismiss the unease that crawled up my spine like cold fingers. When I reached my apartment, the feeling of being watched had not dissipated, instead, it grew, thickening the air around me until it felt like I was wading through a swamp of unseen eyes. I fumbled with my keys, my fingers clumsy and shaking. The door swung open with a creak that sounded too loud in the empty street, and I hurried inside, slamming it shut and locking it behind me. That night, the dreams began. They were vivid and jarring, filled with whispered voices and fleeting shadows. I was in my apartment, but it wasn't my apartment, it was a labyrinth of endless rooms and corridors that twisted back on themselves. I was being chased by something, but every time I looked back, there was only darkness, an oppressive void that seemed to laugh with a low, haunting echo. I woke up with a start, the echo of that laughter still ringing in my ears. My room was dark, the only light coming from the digital glow of the clock beside my bed. 3.07 AM A shiver ran through me as I noticed something off, a faint light seeping under the crack of my bedroom door, moving as if someone were pacing back and forth. I sat frozen, staring at the thin sliver of light, watching it flicker and dance. My breath caught in my throat when I saw a shadow pause and then press against the bottom of the door, as if someone were lying down on the other side, watching me through the crack. The next few days were a blur of paranoia. I felt eyes on me at every turn. At work, my colleagues' usual banter sounded distant, their laughter sometimes morphing into the low, mocking echo from my dream. I kept seeing glimpses of something in the periphery of my vision, a flit of darkness that vanished when I turned to look directly at it. I tried to convince myself it was all in my head, that the stress of work and lack of sleep were getting to me. But the feeling of dread only deepened, coiling in my gut like a living thing. One evening, as I was closing up the office alone, the air suddenly dropped in temperature. Goosebumps erupted across my skin as I heard the soft, undeniable sound of someone sighing right behind me. I spun around, my heart hammering in my chest, but there was nothing, just the empty office and the quiet hum of the air conditioning. I rushed home, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. When I arrived, I immediately noticed that the light in my kitchen was flickering. With a trembling hand, I reached to steady myself against the wall and felt a cold spot, an unnaturally icy patch that shouldn't have been there. That night, as I tried to sleep, the air felt charged, heavy as if a storm were about to break. Just as I was drifting off, a loud bang jolted me awake. It came from the living room. Heart pounding, I grabbed the baseball bat I kept beside my bed and tiptoed towards the sound. The living room was in disarray, books pulled from the shelves, cushions from the couch strewn on the floor. And in the middle of the chaos was a single, unblemished photograph lying face up on the coffee table. It was a picture of me, one I didn't remember taking, sleeping on my couch with the shadows gathered around me like specters. I backed away, my breath coming in short, sharp gasps. A cold whisper seemed to drift through the room, words indistinct yet unmistakably sinister. 
I couldn't make out what it said, but it felt like a promise or a threat. The room spun around me, and I staggered back to my bedroom, locking the door behind me. Lying in bed, I stared at the ceiling, listening to the silence of my apartment. It was oppressive, loaded with unspoken words and unseen eyes. The shadows seemed to creep along the walls, stretching toward me with claw-like fingers. I squeezed my eyes shut, praying for dawn. But sleep would not come, and neither would peace. As I lay there, a low, dragging sound began at the far end of my apartment, growing louder as it neared my bedroom door. It stopped just outside, and then, with a creak that made my blood run cold, the doorknob began to turn. Slowly, deliberately, despite the lock. I knew then that whatever haunted me was not bound by the laws of reality. It was something darker, something that could not be locked out. The door edged open, revealing only darkness beyond, darkness that seemed to pulsate with malevolence. From that darkness, a figure emerged, its features obscured but its intent horrifyingly clear. It moved towards me, and as it did, the air around it seemed to warp and twist, the very fabric of reality bending around its will. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. I tried to move, but my body was frozen, locked in a nightmare that was all too real. The figure reached for me, its hand outstretched, fingers tapering into shadows that whispered of despair. And then, the world went black. When I awoke, it was morning, but the terror of the night lingered like a stain on my soul. I knew then that I could not stay here any longer. I had to leave, to escape the shadows that stalked me. But as I began to pack, I realized the horror might not be tied to a place, but to me. And as I zipped up my last suitcase, the lights flickered once more. And in the reflection of the window, I saw it, the shadow, standing just behind me, waiting. As I turn to face it, the story I have to tell you ends, for now. The continuation of this dark journey must wait, as must I, in the presence of my relentless watcher. As I turn slowly, the room seemed to contract, the walls inching closer with an almost imperceptible groan. The shadow, darker than the surrounding gloom, stood still, a silent sentinel watching with unseen eyes. Its form blurred at the edges, merging with the darkness, its presence a cold spot in the already frigid air. I swallowed hard, my throat dry, my voice a mere whisper lost in the stillness of my once safe haven. Who are you? What do you want from me? My voice cracked the words evaporating into the heavy air. There was no response, only a palpable intensification of the silence, as if the entire world was holding its breath. The shadow shifted, its movements fluid, like ink spilling across a page. It stretched taller, its form almost touching the ceiling, enveloping the room in an even deeper darkness. The air around me thickened, pressing against my skin like unseen hands. My heart pounded in my ears, each beat a loud drum echoing in the emptiness. A low hum started to fill the room, a sound so deep and resonant it seemed to come from the very walls themselves. It grew louder, a cacophony that vibrated through my bones. Then, suddenly, the shadow lunged. I stumbled backward, tripping over my suitcase, my back slamming against the wall. The shadow halted, inches from my face, and I could see, or thought I could see, the faintest outline of a face within the darkness. It was distorted, as if viewing a face pressed against a thin fabric, features melded into a grotesque mask. The air grew colder, a chill that seeped into my bones, and with it came a smell foul and decayed like the breath of a grave. My eyes watered, my senses overwhelmed by the stench. The shadow's face seemed to split into a semblance of a grin, 
revealing nothing but deeper darkness within. It whispered, a sound like leaves rustling in a dead wind. You cannot escape what is already inside. I tried to scream, but the sound was swallowed by the oppressive atmosphere. The walls began to pulse, a slow, rhythmic throb that matched the beating of my frantic heart. Pictures began to fall from the walls, their frames cracking as they hit the ground, glass shattering, their images distorted and twisted into nightmarish visions. Desperate, I pushed past the shadow, its form chillingly intangible, a mist that recoiled at my touch but offered no resistance. I ran to the door, yanking it open, only to find the hallway transformed. The familiar carpeted floor was gone, replaced by a dirt path that wound into an impossible distance, flanked by gnarled trees whose branches clawed at the air like skeletal hands. I stepped back, my mind reeling, unable to comprehend the transformation. The door slammed shut behind me, cutting off any retreat. The hum was now a roar, filling the corridor with its relentless sound. The trees swayed, though there was no wind, their leaves whispering secrets in a language I could not understand. Ahead, a flicker of movement caught my eye, a shadow within shadows, darting between the trees. Then another, and another, a procession of specters that seemed to be watching me from the depths of their woodland prison. I walked forward, each step hesitant, the dirt cold and damp beneath my feet. The path twisted and turned, leading me deeper into the darkness. The trees leaned closer, their branches brushing against me with touches like cold, dry lips. Whispers filled the air, growing louder with each step. They were talking about me, discussing me, plotting with voices that sounded like twisted echoes of my own. Suddenly, the path opened into a clearing, and there, in the center, stood a house. It was a grotesque parody of my own home, its windows like dark, watching eyes, its door a gaping maw waiting to swallow me whole. The specters circled it, a blur of movement, more felt than seen. As I approached, the door creaked open on its own, inviting or daring me to enter. I hesitated, my heart a drum of dread in my chest. But behind me, the whispers grew threatening, pushing me forward. With a breath that tasted of dust and decay, I stepped inside. The interior was both familiar and utterly foreign. Corridors branched off in impossible directions, each turn and twist revealing rooms that defied the structure of the house I knew. The air was thick with the smell of mold and something sweeter, sicklier, a stench of rotting flowers mixed with the iron tang of blood. I wandered through the rooms, each more disturbing than the last. Mirrors lined the walls of one, reflecting not my image but scenes of horror, visions of myself in various states of torment, suffering under the hands of unseen assailants. In another room, the walls seemed to pulse with a steady heartbeat, the wallpaper peeling back to reveal flesh-like material underneath. A soft giggle echoed down the hall, a sound so out of place in the encompassing dread that it froze me in my tracks. The laugh was followed by the patter of small feet, and a child's voice called out from the darkness, come and find me. The invitation was both a taunt and a trap, but I felt compelled to follow. The voice led me deeper into the house, down corridors that narrowed until I had to turn sideways to pass, into a room so small it felt like a coffin. And there, in the shadows, the giggling stopped. Silence fell like a cloak, smothering the whispers and the hum, leaving only the sound of my own breathing. I turned around, searching the darkness, and found myself face to face with the most horrifying apparition yet. It was a figure, small and hunched, its features obscured by the dim light. But as it stepped forward, the details became clear, too clear. It was me, but not me. A doppelganger, its eyes hollow, its skin pale and translucent, a grotesque smile carved into its face. 
It reached out, its fingers elongated and warped, and as it touched my arm, the world spun, the ground tilting beneath my feet. I fell, the room dissolving around me, and when I landed, it was not on the floor of the house, but in a place far darker, far colder, far more terrifying. I was in a forest, but not one made of trees. No, this forest was made of bones. Human bones, piled high, forming trunks and branches, skulls with empty sockets watching as I stumbled through. The ground was carpeted with hair and teeth, a crunching underfoot that made my stomach churn. The moon overhead was a sickly yellow, casting long, twisted shadows across the bone forest. Sounds of weeping filled the air, a mournful chorus that seemed to come from the bones themselves. And ahead, the path continued, leading me deeper into this macabre wood, to a destination unseen, to horrors yet to be revealed. And still, I walked forward, compelled by a force I could not resist, driven by a fear I could not escape. The bone trees leaned closer, their branches creaking like old bones, and from the depths of the forest, new shadows emerged, ready to join my haunted procession. The story, it seems, was far from over. The path through the bone forest seemed endless, each step sinking into a morass of human remnants, the crunch underfoot a constant, gruesome reminder of where I was. The weeping grew louder, the cries of the lost souls intertwined with the clacking of the bones and the cold wind that swept through the ghastly woods. Shadows flitted between the skeletal trees, half-seen figures that moaned softly, reaching out with brittle, bony fingers as if to drag me into their eternal sorrow. I pressed on, driven by a primal urge to escape, yet drawn deeper by an invisible tether that seemed to bind my very essence to the heart of this nightmare. The moon cast a pallid light over the landscape, its beams turning the bone white to a ghostly gray, illuminating patches of the path ahead in an eerie glow. Ahead, the forest began to thin, giving way to a clearing where the ground was covered not in bones but in a thick, black tar that glistened under the moonlight. In the center of this clearing stood a grotesque statue, an idol crafted from bones and festooned with decaying flowers. Its hollow eyes seemed to watch me, a silent sentinel in this land of death. As I approached, the air grew thick with the scent of iron and rot, a metallic tang that filled my mouth and nose. The statue seemed to pulsate with a dark energy, its form shimmering slightly, as if it were not entirely solid. Around its base, the tar bubbled and seethed, as if something beneath the surface struggled to free itself. I circled the statue, my heart pounding in my chest. The cries and whispers of the forest had faded here, replaced by a deep, resonant thumping that seemed to come from the ground itself. It was like the heartbeat of the earth, slow and powerful, each throb echoing through the clearing and vibrating in my bones. Suddenly, the ground trembled, a violent quiver that sent me staggering. From the tar, hands began to emerge, pale, grasping appendages that reached for the sky as if begging for salvation. The statue's eyes flared with a malevolent light, and the thumping grew louder, more urgent. I backed away, my mind reeling from the horror before me, but my feet caught in the sticky tar, pulling me down. Panic surged through me as I struggled against the grip of the tar, which stretched up my legs like the hands of the damned, cold and unyielding. As I fought to free myself, the air around the statue distorted, warping the light into strange, surreal patterns. A figure began to materialize in front of the statue, its form coalescing from the darkness and the tar. It was a shadow at first, then gained color and substance, a figure I recognized with a shock of terror. It was the same doppelganger I had encountered in the twisted version of my house, its grotesque smile wider than ever, its hollow eyes gleaming with malice. It stepped toward me, each movement echoing the thumping of the earth, synchronized with a terrible inevitability. Why do you flee from your destiny? It whispered, 
its voice a chilling blend of my own and something far darker. You cannot escape what you are, what you have always been. I struggled to speak, to deny its words, but the tar muffled my cries, pulling me deeper. The doppelganger bent down, its face inches from mine, its breath cold and smelling of the grave. This is where you belong, it hissed, among the lost and the forgotten, where all your fears converge. You are part of this place, molded by its sorrows, shaped by its despair. Desperation surged within me, a final, fierce defiance. With a Herculean effort, I tore one leg free of the tar, then the other, lunging forward. The doppelganger recoiled, its expression twisting into one of rage. I didn't stop to see more, I ran, stumbling away from the clearing, away from the bone forest and its haunting chorus. The path wound back through the trees, now silent sentinels to my frantic escape. The moon, obscured by clouds, cast only fleeting light upon the ground, but fear lent speed to my steps. Behind me, the thumping continued, a relentless pursuit that I felt more than heard, a force as inescapable as gravity. I emerged from the forest into a landscape transformed. The city I knew was gone, replaced by ruins that whispered of devastation. Buildings were crumpled and streets cracked, the skyline a jagged silhouette against a starless sky. And everywhere, the shadows watched. I moved through the wreckage, each step an effort against a growing exhaustion that threatened to drag me to the ground. The shadows in the corners of my vision grew bolder, clustering around me, their forms undulating with a life of their own. I found myself on the familiar street of my apartment, though it too was changed, broken. The building loomed ahead, its windows dark eyes and a pale face. I climbed the steps my hand trembling as I reached for the door. It swung open silently, revealing the hollow darkness within. Inside, the air was thick with the smell of dust and decay. My footsteps echoed in the empty halls, a lonely sound that seemed to be swallowed by the shadows. I ascended the stairs, each floor passing in a blur, until I reached my door. With a deep breath, I opened it, stepping into the darkness of my apartment. The shadows seemed to pull back, then surge forward, enveloping me in their embrace. I felt them press against me, cold and insistent, and I knew that this was not the end, merely a deeper descent into the nightmare. The room spun, the shadows danced, and the story stretched out before me, a path I was compelled to follow, deeper into the darkness, deeper into the terror, with no end in sight. As the door closed behind me, sealing me in the gloom, the finality of my situation descended like a curtain. And in that darkness, the real horror began anew, waiting to be explored, waiting to be understood, waiting for the next part of the story to unfold. The shadows enveloped me as the door clicked shut, their embrace suffocatingly tight as if confirming their possession over me. As my eyes adjusted to the gloom, the contours of my once familiar apartment morphed before me, the walls breathing and pulsating like the innards of some great beast. A chill seeped into my bones, a chill that spoke of finality. Yet, beneath that dread, a spark of resolve flickered to life. This nightmare had followed me far too long, taunting and twisting through my days and nights. I would face it now face whatever truth lay buried in this darkness. Show yourself, I commanded, my voice a mix of fear and defiance. End this. At first, there was silence, the sword that suffocates. Then, a slow, mocking clap filled the room. From the corner of my vision, a figure materialized, its features obscured yet familiar, too familiar. It was the doppelganger, its smile a gash of darkness. Brave, it sneered, its voice a distorted echo of my own. But what do you hope to accomplish? You can't fight what you don't understand. 
Then make me understand, I shot back, steadying my trembling legs. Why me? What is this? The figure circled me, its movements fluid in the shadowy light. It's not about you, it began, its voice softening to a hypnotic whisper. Not really. You're just the vessel, a conduit for the fears of thousands. We are the shadows of all who walked before you, and all who will walk after. We are the unspoken dread, the scream in the night, the glimpse of something sinister just out of sight. I listened, heart pounding, as it continued, and you, you are the one who sees, the one who can bring those fears to life. You give us form, make us real. Without you, we are nothing but whispers in the dark. Why me? I whispered, feeling the weight of countless eyes upon me. Because you fear, and your fear is potent. It leaned closer, its breath cold against my cheek. But there's a way out. A way to end this. Tell me, I demanded, desperation threading through my voice. The doppelganger's smile widened. Face us. Embrace us. Let us in, and you will be free. It was madness, but a part of me believed, believed that acceptance might be the key. I closed my eyes, taking a deep breath. I accept you, I said, the words tearing from me. I accept my fear. The room grew colder, the shadows deepening, swirling around me. Then, they surged forward, rushing into me with the force of a storm. I screamed, a sound that was lost in the cacophony of voices that filled my mind, voices that were not my own. The pain was immense, as if my soul were being torn apart and stitched back together. Then, just as quickly as it had begun, it ended. I staggered backward, gasping for air, my eyes snapping open. The apartment was silent, the shadows receding into the corners where they belonged. The oppressive feel of being watched, of being followed, was gone. I felt lighter, as though a tremendous weight had been lifted from my shoulders. I walked to the window, pulling aside the curtain. The city sprawled before me, the same as it had always been. People walked the streets, cars honked life went on. But for me, something fundamental had shifted. Days turned into weeks, and the peace remained. My nights were no longer plagued by dreams of shadows and whispers. I returned to my routine, to my life, but with a newfound appreciation for the light, and for the normalcy I once took for granted. But I knew, deep down, that the darkness was still a part of me, a scar that would never fully heal. I had embraced it, accepted it, and in doing so, had found a way to live with it. It was a delicate balance, one I would have to maintain for the rest of my life. Months passed, and the incident became a distant memory, a surreal chapter in my life that felt almost like a dream. But it was real as real as the subtle shift in my gaze when I passed by a particularly dark alley or the faint shiver that ran down my spine on an unusually cold night. As I sat in my living room one evening, looking at the play of shadows cast by the setting sun, I realized that the horror was never about the shadows themselves but about what they represented. Fear, uncertainty, the unknown, these were the true horrors and they were not to be fought but understood and respected. The doorbell rang, pulling me from my thoughts. I rose to answer it, finding a delivery man with a package, something I hadn't ordered. I signed for it, curiosity peaked. Back inside, I opened it to find a book with a note attached. Learn from the past, look to the future. The book was an old tome, its cover embossed with images of shadows and light. 
I flipped it open, the pages filled with tales of fear and courage, of darkness and the overcoming of it. It was a history of sorts, a compilation of countless experiences with the shadows. I realized then that my story was not mine alone but a part of something much larger. A narrative woven through the fabric of humanity, a tale as old as time itself. As I turned the pages, reading by the light of the setting sun, I knew that while my chapter might have ended, the story would go on. And with each telling, with each reader who braved its depths, the shadows would live on, a reminder of what lies in the periphery of our vision, in the corner of our eyes, in the darkest parts of our minds. So, I read on, the shadows around me nothing more than the play of light and dark, a visual whisper of the eternal dance between fear and understanding. And in that moment, I was content, at peace with the knowledge that the horror was not an end but a beginning.